بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Today I'd like to present the school of Al Imam Ahmed. Personally, this is the school that is most familiar to me. Now, Al Imam Ahmed was from the greatest scholars of Al Islam. He left an imprint on Islamic history just like the other Imams. His full name is Ahmed ibn Hanbal al Shaybani, and he is known for Al Musnad, which is a huge, huge work in Hadith and one of the great books of the Sunnah. And there is so much to say about the Musnad. First of all, it's so huge that it's over 25,000 hadith. And also there's the question of whether every hadith included by Imam Ahmed represents his opinion. And Ibn Muflih, he talks about this in his book Al-Adab al And he mentions that this is a difference of opinion amongst the Hanbali scholars. And Ibn Muflih concludes that the strongest and apparent opinion is that anything in the Musnad that Imam Ahmed does not contradict directly is basically in line with his opinions. Now, Imam Ahmed was known for being from the school of Ahlul Hadith. So the Hanbali Madhab is a product of the school of Ahlul Hadith. And Imam Ahmed's most famous teacher was none other than Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah. And obviously Imam Ahmed was his student. And there's many ways we can trace Imam Ahmed back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and back to various companions, but this is the most famous way through a Shafi'i, who in turn was the student of Imam Malik, and that leads us back to various companions. Something Imam Ahmed is known for is what is known as Al-Mihna, the Inquisition. So basically at that time, uh, the concept of the creation of the Qur'an was very widespread, and it was adopted by the various caliphs, and basically, they would persecute any scholar who went against this aqidah, this belief, which is the creation of the Qur'an, which is a kufr uh, belief. Obviously, the Qur'an is the word of Allah and it is uncreated. And Imam Ahmed is known for being the one scholar who stood up for the truth, and he was tortured for it. And in the end, the truth prevailed. So the Salaf praised Imam Ahmed for this. And Ali ibn al-Madini even said that Allah fortified this religion via two men, Abu Bakr when he fought the wars of al ridda and Imam Ahmed when he survived al-Mihna. Even others said that this was such a big deal that Imam Ahmed took the position of the prophets when he did this. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but there is a reason why he is called the Imam of Ahlul Sunnah. Now the question is, what is special about the Hanbali Madhab? We can cite many things that make it special, but I personally think that one of the things that make it very, very special is how Imam Ahmed was attached to the fiqh of the Sahaba. Imam Ahmed was particularly attached to the legal opinions of the companions, radiallahu anhum. Now obviously, just like the other Imams, Imam Ahmed believed in firstly the Qur'an as a source of law, then the Sunnah, then Ijma'a, then Qiyas, and he used Qiyas analogy in cases of necessity, but he also gave a heavy importance to the opinion of the companion, the Sahabi. So Imam Ibn Qayyim, he talks about this at length in his book, I'lam al Muqain, and he shows how, subhanAllah, this is truly the mark of the Hanbali Madhab. So first of all, Imam Ahmed considered that Ijma'a consensus was any opinion of a companion that was not contradicted by other companions. So this was the, for him, the consensus of the companions. And in cases where the companions differed, then Imam Ahmed would pick what he believed to be closer to the truth and more in line with the Qur'an and the Sunnah. But Ibn Qayyim, he mentions something amazing. He mentions how the opinions of Imam Ahmed are pretty much in line with the opinions of the companions. To the point where, for example, if on a legal issue the companions have three different opinions, then you can find three different narrated opinions of Imam Ahmed. And anybody who knows the Hanbali Madhab well knows this. Kathratul Riwayat, which is basically the numerous narrated opinions of Imam Ahmed. And obviously, we have something called Al Mu'tamad, which is what the madhab and scholars later choose as the prime or strongest opinion. But nevertheless, you have all these opinions uh, on one specific issue and they can all be traced back to the companions, subhanAllah. So it's almost like on one issue, Imam Ahmed would give you the opinion of Ibn Umar, for example, 
And then the next day, on the same exact issue, he would give you the opinion of Ibn Mas'ud. And Ibn Qayyim mentions how the opinions of the Sahaba, the companions, were so important to Imam Ahmed that in many cases he even gave precedence to those opinions over certain types of weaker hadith, like the Mursal hadith. And this shows us the importance of the companions. And unfortunately, many today in the Ummah, they belittle the companions. So you may bring them an opinion of a companion, for example, and he'll tell you, Oh brother, we follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah, this is just a companion. But this is not correct. Yes, we follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah, but we understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah through the lens of the people who were closest to the Prophet wasallam, literally and metaphorically. And they are the ones who have the most knowledge of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And yes, the companions are not perfect, but their opinions truly hold weight. So here I chose an example to really show what we're talking about. And it's the issue of Bay'ul Urbun, which in English would be down payments. And so what's the ruling on down payments? So there's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars on this issue. But what we're going to focus on is the opinion of Imam Ahmed. And while most of these scholars held the opinion that making a down payment is not permissible, Imam Ahmed, on the other hand, considered it to be permissible based on the action of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. So al-Athram, one of his most famous students, asks him about this. He asks him, is this your opinion? And Imam Ahmed replies, what do you mean? This is Umar that we're talking about here. This is Umar. So subhanAllah guys, look at this. He is basically invoking the opinion of Umar as evidence. Yet you have people today come up to you and be like, Brother, this, this is a companion. He holds no weight. We follow only the Quran and the Sunnah. Allahul Musta'an. Even if we may disagree or hold another opinion, we must always give the companions their due respect. That being said, I hope you have benefited from this presentation. And Allah knows best. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانًا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ